Welcome back to the 5x5. Five five. It is David, and this is the 5x5 five five Late Night Show. I wasn't going to do anything tonight, but um, I guess I felt like talking a little bit. Don't ask me why, because I really don't have much to talk about, but I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure I'll come up with something. Um, it's been kind of a, I don't know, kind of a weird, <laughs> a weird few days for me. And not, not weird in the sense that crazy things have been happening. It's weird because... Um, I guess it's not too weird. It's about the norm. I don't get to sleep. I don't get to rest. And uh, if you guys listen to the um, uh, Fanboy Weekly Show the other day, I uh, Sunday night. Well, I guess Monday night. Um, I worked like I don't know two or three doubles back to back to back, and I was tired. And you know how you're so tired you just can't sleep. And I think that's what I'm experiencing. I'm so tired I can't. Um, sleep and have anxiety because I know I have things I need to do and hopefully tomorrow I will I will be able to absolutely do nothing if I choose to but that's going to be a hope and a prayer because um, people don't leave me alone but anyhow I hope you guys are doing okay um, like I said I'm fine um, thank you guys for checking us out checking the show out uh, listening whenever wherever however uh, you're able to hear the show. I do appreciate that. And um, uh, I've been today. <laughs> uh, I, I, I had to run some errands. Today is Wednesday, right? Yeah, this see, it's like the days are not. I don't know. The days are. I guess the time change is still kind of messing with me. And um, it's like the the days just going so fast. I can't decide. I can't figure out which day I'm on. Which um, that's not good. Uh, I know tomorrow's my last day off. Tomorrow's my Sunday, <laughs> even though it's Thursday, because I go back to work on Friday. Um, I wish I could. If I had thought sooner, I would have had somebody to work for me on Friday because I need an extra day. But then again, when I take extra days off, there's just something else I have to do for somebody else, which it, like, I'm not complaining about it. It just happens to be the truth. And <laughs> and. um uh, in the the work drama I was telling you guys about um, a few episodes ago, it, it's kind of settled down. Uh, me working this much this weekend is kind of the result of everything that happened, um, unfortunately. But you know, people are going to talk, and they're always going to talk crap and uh, be in your business. And um, you know, that's one thing that is. Um, bad about living in a smaller city now when i lived in atlanta you know you, there's a ton of people there and you know you don't not that you get lost in the crowd but there's so many people especially in the gay community there's still there's a lot of gay people that you um the chances that unless you run in the same circles all the time the chance that you on a chance encounter run into somebody that you know it's very slim unless that you're planning on meeting up with those people and they happen to know people that you know it, it's very very slim because the city is so big and then and you know the straight population it's just a big city and and so your business can't get put out i know people can gossip even in big cities but um but here i was talking to a friend uh that i hadn't talked to in quite some time, um, and not because I, did, I didn't want to per se, but he does he does some things that I don't do in my personal life, and so when that thing those things are kind of out there, I don't I don't want to associate myself with that. And um, not that I'm better than anybody, I'm just not going to invite um, stuff that I don't necessarily approve of into my life. And uh, anyhow, so, but we we talk, we we you know we I've been knowing him for a lifetime, but and uh, he was telling me, uh, catching me up on the scene here, what's going on in um, uh, the city, and I was like, wow, these people are still doing the same. If it's true, in which I, I from what I've seen, um, the things are true, and I'm like, you know, when do you grow up? When do you? Um, stop thinking it's okay to uh run your rent to the bar every 
every weekend or three or four times a week. And I've been trying to um, <laughs> at least once a week go out and do something for myself, hang out with a friend or two, have a have a drink, be an adult, you know, and uh, I didn't do anything this week. I was too tired. And uh, I, but these people that I used to hang out with, you know, they're still doing the same old thing. And and you know, we're at the and we're all the same age. So I'm like, you know, I, I would expect you to progress. Not that I'm trying to control anyone's life. You know, you do you. But it doesn't make sense to me that you haven't moved from the place that you were. 15 years ago you're still in that same place still hanging on to those same ideas that are a little bit antiquated and it doesn't really make sense so when do you grow up <laughs> when do you when do you when do you say okay i'm done with that it's time for me to do something else then we talk when we also talked about uh being single and it is hard to date in a city uh that the, the population um uh, is not big and um it's it's hard to date and it's hard to uh meet new people and um so i'm like i said well i because I've, I've already i think i've told you guys before i will never ever date anybody from this area ever again you know um i i think i'm possibly moving back no eventually i say eventually i'll, I'll eventually move back to atlanta um but um not um no, not anytime soon, I don't think, but um, it's coming. It's 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 in my future um, to to get back to Atlanta and enjoy. Even though Atlanta has its problems as well, but yeah, I just um, not not happy here. And I, I, and I think that's part of it. I'm so disillusioned with the type of person that's here, and, the, and it's not even that the person; it's the mindset and um, and the the outright racism. And bigotry that this that this city participates in, but it's it's um, institutionalized, you know, it's, it, and 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 the the people that are oppressed, you know, since it's been they have the whole mentality, but well, that's just the way it is. And I hear that so much from people that live here in, in the city, and you say, well, that's not right. They, they can't do that. And then, well, well, you know, it's it's just. The area is just the way it is. I'm like, that's not acceptable. <laughs> you know, you need to be able to stand up for what you feel is right. And if you feel like you're being wrong, um, I think you need to be able to speak your mind without any reprisals. But sometimes they're going to be reprisals. But I think if you have a certain set of convictions and uh, things of that nature, then I think you should just stand up for yourself and um be heard and you know tell people what you're going to stand for and what you're not going to stand for because it is your right but not not a long show tonight i might play more music than talk actually um i've been watching the i don't know if you guys this is a this is a fanboy weekly show um topic i don't know if you guys um uh what are into like the kind of geeky stuff and um there's a it was a web series it started as a web series with felicia day now if you remember felicia day felicia day was on um the last season of buffy the vampire slayer and she was one of the potential slayers the little red she had a red crop top hair uh kind of quirky and funny um and and she started this um web series and she also has geeks and sundry geeks and sundry with her brother who's really really cute um on youtube and uh i absolutely love her because i think she's funny and of course anything that's connected to buffy i automatically like <laughs> if uh drusilla had her, it was in a, in a in a horrible musical that i just couldn't stand the character who played drusilla drusilla i can't think of her name right now um i would love it because it's uh, she's associated with buffy um but anyhow <laughs> um and, and of course joss whedon you know, the Avengers dude, the guy behind Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, he was the creator of Buffy. And I actually picked up a Buffy comic book today, and he's still the executive producer of the comic, which I, I, I kind of knew, but kind of didn't. So I thought that was really, really cool. And so I picked it up, and it was actually a good book. You know, they're getting back to the basics. It's more, to me, I've seen some of the other um, incarnations of the comic, and I'm surprised it's still going on. Um, and this is like a five-part series. And it's more like the show, where the show would have left off if they were still in California, and no longer in Sunnydale, but they're in... Um, Fresno or somewhere like that in California fighting zombie vampires. But anyhow, 
um, Felicia Day. And uh, there's a show, a web series that was called The Guild. And The Guild was about five members who played um, these online uh, role playing games. Now, <laughs> if you know me personally, or if you listen to early uh, Fanboy Friday and Fanboy Weekly shows, I used to talk about a game I used to play called. City of Heroes. Now that game came out in 2004, and I was one of, and I started in 2004. I won't say I wasn't one of the first players, but I was. I played in the first year that this that this game came about. I had never played any of these type of games. Um, I didn't play WoW. Um, I tried to play WoW. I didn't like it. World of Warcraft. Um, I played Guild Wars, and I also played uh, EverQuest 2. And it's this little, little world, and then the the, the reason I liked um, City of, I don't play Champions. The reason why I liked um, City of Heroes, it was based in a superhero universe where you had a little character that has superpowers, and it it it, it went around the city saving people and beating up bad guys and it was so I remember when I first got the game my heart would beat really really fast because I couldn't believe I was actually playing it because it was, it was th that big to me now yeah I'm a nerd I try to tell y'all guys but nobody listens to me and so this web series called the guild it was it, that that's what they were they were pretending like they was playing a game or I guess the show was based on them playing a game and how um the the their communication and then actually meeting um and normally when you have an online game, game that you play like that you don't have people in your city now i was lucky enough when i lived in atlanta um i actually had a gay group of friends that actually lived in atlanta and we all we would get together every once in a while to hang out and do stuff um outside of the game so it was, we had our own little guild um but I, when I was trying to tell people this, they was like, oh my God, you're such a nerd. They couldn't understand, so it wasn't worth me really telling them. But that's what the show is kind of based on. And then um, I, I haven't seen, I've watched, I've, I've rewatched seasons one through five, and they were only like 10 to 15 minute episodes, and each season had maybe 10 episodes. Um, and it's so funny because if you're a gamer, that plays these game on games online. You you, you kind of knew like oh that's right you know you kind of kind of identify with some of the characters um, that they put out there. Uh, and then the and and then the, the different demographic. You know there was a younger kid, then the old guy, then the really super dweeby guy, and then the the gamer girl, and then the the stereotypical. Um, uh, Asian chick <laughs> that played games, so it's really good. So if it's, it's, this came on Netflix. That's how I was able to watch it. So if you have Netflix, look up the Guild and watch it. It, it doesn't take very long. It's, it, it's, it's very very funny, and it has um, Felicia Day on it, who is the star. And then like this last, the the last season of Watch Watch, which was season five, they have. Um, a lot of cameos. Stan Lee's even in it. Stan, yeah, Stan Lee's even in it. So I thought that was kind of cool. But that's what I've been doing. So after I get off here, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna lay down and I'm gonna watch the final season if my head stops hurting, and maybe I'll just go to sleep because <laughs> uh, I don't know something's going on with my eyelid and it's making my head hurt. Um, you know, getting old sucks, people. But like I said, not a very long show tonight. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the um, the uh, teacher who who thought that it was okay to um uh g do an anti-gay rant about a gay uh student group um in um West Virginia imagine that and then also the Fox uh news accident well a Fox affiliate incident and then a man who allegedly killed his wife to to um, hide his same-sex attraction to man so we're gonna take a break and we'll come back talk about those things and then we're gonna call it an early night thank you guys for listening it is david from the five by five and this is the five by five late night show we'll be right back imagine a world where bullying isn't considered a normal part of childhood a world where i'm not afraid to go to school <laughs> to speak out to be myself. Loser. A world where I'm not afraid to be caught alone. Come on, punk. We have the power to stop the bullying. Speak out. Speak up. Educate. Find out what to look for and how you can make a difference at bullying.org. Bullying is not kids being kids. It's not about good homes or bad homes. 
it's not a normal part of growing up. I shouldn't be afraid to get on the school bus. To turn on my computer. Message. Or walk to my locker. <laughs> Did you know that a bully will stop his or her behavior in 10 seconds when their peers speak up? Use your voice. Hey, leave him alone. We have the power to stop bullying. Find out more at bullying.org. Bullying.org. Where you're not alone. Where you're not alone. Where you're not alone. Okay, we're back. It is the 5x5 Five Five Late Night Show, and I'm your host, David. Thank you guys for joining me. I uh, appreciate however, wherever, whenever you guys are listening to me ramble and talk and be silly and laugh a little bit. I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to check me out. <clears throat> Don't forget to send me a tweet at the 5x5 Five Five or check out the blog, the 5x5.blogspot.com, or you can follow me on Facebook. 
dot com forward slash the five by five completely spelled out um yesterday i was t- a friend of mine had a show i'm on here Dwayne hadley if you haven't checked out Dwayne hadley check out his show here on spreaker.com and also on iHeartRadio. radio um, and he his show was about facial expression expressions and he was saying um you know he was looking at it from the perspective don't judge a book by by the cover you might look at somebody who looks mad um <laughs> you might look at somebody who's frown or something, but they may may be happy. I don't know if I agree with that because when I have a facial expression, it's I, you know I, I I my face I cannot hide my emotions from my face. So if I'm giving somebody a dirty look, that means uh, they didn't did something wrong, and I'm pissed off at them or whatever. Or if I'm rolling my eyes, you know my my facial expressions. I'm very, very transparent in that respect. I, I'm my my facial expressions normally uh, <laughs> give off what I'm feeling, and uh, but I don't make any apologies before because if if I don't like you and I give you a side eye, that means yeah, you you probably need to stay away. So check out Dwayne's show here on the Five by Five. I think he calls it the Daily Dosage of of the Dwayne Hadley show. He does those just about every day. Check him out. Um, let's see. So before we went to break, um, I was talking about what we're going to talk about tonight. And, uh, first up, we'll just start here. Uh, a man leg- allegedly kills his wife to hide his same sex attraction to men. How he thought that was going to work, unless she's seen him doing something. Um, I, I, yeah, that doesn't work. Um, Has let's say Hasvir Ram Ginde, um, he attacked his his wife Varka Rani at their home with a metal pipe from a vacuum cleaner. Oh, he must have one of them expensive vacuum cleaners because every vacuum cleaner I've ever owned, they have plastic pipes. He must have what's the thing a Dyson, (laughs) the ones you see on QVC, uh, them five hundred (laughs) dollars vacuum cleaners years ago. Uh, remember what's the one really expensive uh, vacuum cleaners that they come to your house and they do a uh, they give you, they'll say they're going to vacuum uh, two rooms of your house for free and give you a sales presentation uh, Ger- Kerber Kerber is that what it is Kerber Kerber vacuum cleaners it's not Gerber because that's baby food Kerber Ker- Kirby that's what it is Kirby vacuum cleaners and uh, I remember years ago, <laughs> this one guy came to my my mom, my mother and my father's house, and uh, they wanted me here just because to see what he was talking about. Because I'm, you're not you're not gonna scam my mom and dad into buying a thousand dollar vacuum cleaner. That's not gonna happen. And so uh, this guy comes over and he's talking about uh, the vacuum cleaner and how good stuff. And he came in. I remember it was it was it was warm outside, and uh, he came when it was daylight. And this man didn't leave until it was nighttime. And so they just don't go through a vacuum cleaner. So they, they, they show how much dirt they're pulling out of your floor. And he used probably all these little white pads that showed the dirt. And every t- and he had to do that like every every square foot. I'm like, dude. This floor is not that dirty. I don't know what you're doing, but that's all to give you, I guess, the visual impression that, you know, your regular vacuum cleaner is not doing the job. And that's why you need a Kerber, Kirby vacuum cleaner. And, um, and I remember him doing that. And he was here for a long time. And then when I finally said, uh, hey, <laughs> y'all the one that offered a free service to do a sales presentation. You've been here like four hours. Uh, they're not buying one. Can you please leave? He wouldn't leave. He he says, well, can I go out on the porch to use your phone? Uh, I mean, use the phone. I'm like, sure. So he calls his boss and then his boss wanted to come over to the house. I'm like, no, he y'all got to go get out. Take your little paper pads and get up out the house. It was just very, very weird. And they was they was kind of gangsta with it. And um, one of my mother's friends has set her up with that. But I'm like, yeah, don't, don't come back over anymore. We're not buying a vacuum cleaner. There's a thousand dollars with this presentation, trying to strong arm somebody into buying a vacuum cleaner. It was ridiculous. Anyhow, um, <laughs> so he burnt her. Bo- he burnt her body in a garden incinerator, but told the neighbor uh, he had set fire to to just regular trash. Um, 
and the guy is he's 29 years old he said he admits to manslaughter but he denies murder um he said he also admitted to perverting the course of justice by lying to the police and it was an arranged marriage you know they do that that's one of those arabic things and he uh, to miss ronnie earlier in the year to conceal his homosexual homosexuality from his parents no to please his parents um he had told a friend he was attracted to men in the unit in his university study group uh and uh, despite his sexual orientation in october 2012 uh he and his mother traveled to india to find him a wife um, and he actually was set up through a matchmaker in India. You know, they have really, really strict laws and um, th their whole morality on um, homosexuality is kind of bent. And um, and I guess he ha he had some money and I guess the whole their, their family <sighs> perception, uh, even even them living here in the, the States, uh, that's very important to them. And um he had moved to the UK in August after uh, his arranged wife, after they were married, and she felt like, friend says she was felt like um, she was a stranger in a strange land, and she was isolated and friendless and alone. Um, and uh, and then he, they say his he was staring his reality in the face, and um, he would have to explain um any attempt to divorce his new bride but that's not too different from how uh gay people here in the states or american gay people you know when you're growing up and, and i think not really my somewhat my generation but the generation after well before me um they, they i'm sure a lot of them because and i hate to say it because i don't feel like i don't want to feel like i'm talking about bashing my gay brothers and sisters but the generation before me because the, i know a lot of married men that are on the deal and that's how the deal term came um came to be known because there's so many married men on the down low that are gay and had a high hide this homosexuality because of family issues or because of job and that's why we need laws um in the united states to protect uh gay lesbian trans transgendered uh excuse me individuals because of that but yet yeah, still it's not that urge is the urge it's just like a guy a straight guy you know that's in his early 20s just want to bang every female that's walking that that same urge and and i would say men will be men i can't speak uh, speak to what a woman feels because I'm not a woman, but men will be men, and that urge never leaves, and that's why you have so many uh, broken homes because that person was trying to hide uh, their their sexuality for whatever reason, whether it's family, whether it's their job, or um, and they couldn't be true to themselves, but they once they fit figure out okay i can do both because like i said i know and been involved with married men before and um it, it never turns out very pretty and um and, and it's just it's so uh psychologically draining uh when, when, and i didn't think that i would hate to be them living that double life and um i could tell you stories that would blow your mind but they're out there and i just you know i mean i think it's unfair on on both parts um because i can't think it's a come because the point in your time no matter how old you are i have i have adult friends that still haven't came out to their parents and they're you know in their 40s uh, and i'm like it comes a point in time and i'm lucky i guess because i was able to come out relatively early it was in my late 20s and um it was difficult at first, but and everybody's heard my coming out story, but um, I got through it and uh, I did have a lot of support um, f from my family to some extent. Um, at first it was, uh, well, whatever you're doing outside of the house and in your own life is your business. Um, and then when um I start having uh, a, a lot more gay friends and I would see them and I was going out with them and um, had strong bind, bonds with them. You know, it, it got a lot easier. It took my mother a little longer than uh, my father and my sister to get on board. But, you know, n now it's such a non-issue. <laughs> that is not because I'm I'm grown. And so I just want uh, th those men that are sitting and um 
you know, living this double life. You know, I think there comes a point in time if you're in a if you're a grown grown person, if you don't have somebody. Well, I'm not going to say that if you're a grown grown person, you know, over the age 25, even 30, um, I think it's time to be true to yourself. And if you're married, be true to that person and uh, let them go get a life for themselves instead of uh, being with somebody that they can't have 100 um, percent. And that's all I'm going to say about that that because I can get myself in trouble. <laughs> Quick break. We'll be right back. like that song i know i play it a lot that's because i like it that's tanashi with stunt i like when she says she ain't that bitch i said that a lot even though i'm not well yeah i am anyhow welcome back to the five by five late night show i'm david and we're just sitting here chatting and talking and you guys listen to me run my mouth uh like i said i just feel like talking for some reason um my head is going away <laughs> thank god um, another story that I seen this week that I thought was absolutely horrible. Um, there is a West Virginia high school science teacher that is under investigation after a homophobic rant against a gay straight alliance student club. Um, David Falgan, 
is his name, a science teacher at Parkersburg South High School in Wood County, West Virginia, um, is in trouble because after an anti-gay rant he posted on Facebook, this is why you don't let everybody see your, I just read the other day about there was a couple, one was a teacher, one was a, there was two teachers or one was like a, two teachers, one was a coach, one was a teacher, and they was on vacation together, and they were taking vacation pictures, and the, the man was grabbing the girl's boob. And so he, she was fired, but he wasn't. Did y'all hear that story? She was fired. He wasn't. I don't know what happened. This has been like two or three weeks. So I don't know what, what happened after that. But I know she had lost her job because no, she was the coach and he was the teacher. She was the coach that took the girls basketball team or volleyball team to like state for three years in a row or something like that. And they let let him keep his job. You know, there's this so much uh, <laughs> unfairness in the world. And um and that she lost her job, but um, stop putting your Facebook info out there for everybody to see. If I put something out on Facebook that's public, and most of my stuff is not public, that's because I want you to see it, I, or I want somebody to see it, or I want whomever to see it. I don't care. But it's not. I never put anything about my job. And here's another thing. I don't put people I work with on my Facebook page and I get people who I work with all the time asking, you got Facebook? Yeah. You want to add me? No. Even if it's a brother or sister or some rela re relation to the person who's trying to add me that works with me, nah, you can't, you know, when I quit or I get fired or whatever, um, I might add you, but no, because that's how stuff gets started. And, you know, there's always a hater in the group that's going to want to, um, to get you they're always looking to get you and you know people gossip and they share things at work you know i'm like stop all that nonsense um stop putting your facebook stuff on uh for everybody can read for public consumption because it and especially if you're a public figure it will come back and bite you in the ass trust anyhow this teacher Get in trouble because he put this stuff on Facebook. Um, the authorities have launched an investigation uh, into this. Um, the public educator ripped apart his high school's anti. Well, I'm sorry, his high school's gay straight alliance club in an anti-gay social media rant. This is what this idiot says: uh, Club meeting at high school. Rally around them and show your support. Uh, we are also considering a drunks teetotaler club drug sober club smokeless toba tobacco versus smokes club street racing and deer poaching clubs please donate and support us thank you i will <laughs> i think i hear the drag already zinging see <laughs> he did too much now the, he he didn't really say anything really defamatory i guess but he was he was making a mockery of uh, that he showed his dis. He said it without saying it. I guess you could say. And um, and the here's the thing. The bad thing is there were thousands of people who um, liked and supported uh, his status um, on his. I won't say it's really anti-gay, which it is anti-gay. It's more of a bullying message, um, and people were behind that. Um, the school's principal hasn't made any comments on the issue, but the superintendent said that the situation is under investigation and therefore they will not be able to comment um, about it at this moment. Um, Falgan has not said anything. Um, he said he can't talk about it right now. Um, but an English teacher at the high school, Justin McGown, um, and the leader of the GSA did speak out. He said, I'm encouraging students to stand up for what they feel. If I didn't do something or didn't say something and make the community aware of what they stand for then there could be a misrepresentation of what they are so we'll see it's in west virginia so <laughs> you know y'all y'all might as well go on and shut that on down because uh the reality of it all um it's it, people are not going to be accepting not that you shouldn't stand up for yourself because that's what i'm saying but um i'm there for the fight if you're going to fight it fight it um just just just, just be safe you know and these kids are young and i think it's, it's really 
um, a good thing that they they're trying to make a gay student alliance. And I want to know how many how many kids are in the group, and I wonder what the parents are saying um, about the straight kids that are in the gay straight alliance. Um, and because I, when I was in school, something like that would never have existed. Uh, not in my little town. It, it, it's not that much different than from a small West Virginia town, I'm sure. Um, except we don't have do right. Anyhow. Um, and of course, there's a lot of um, nice uh, things that the people are commenting about this article uh, that they're saying about Mr. Fogg. And I just think, you know, keep your mouth shut. You know, you're a teacher. Because my thing is, I don't, if this is how you really feel, then I don't want you teaching my children. Uh, you know any child because uh, kids are in influenced um, and he's a big he, he's dressed in camouflage um, and kids are influenced and they look to you as a role model and just the things you say uh, I think you have to be emotionally a drape when you're in school you have to be neutral and a lot of these 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 um, teachers are obviously aren't able to i know when i was in school uh, there was an assumption that i was gay and uh one of one of the teachers um uh, that's re that was con that was connected to a re very very high profile uh professional baseball player um he thought he could call me a fag uh, in front of my peers and when it got back to me uh, the thing is that he should have been fired but see there was there was nothing they can do um, and there's nothing they wanted to do from this guy because he had a lot of money at the time um, but my parents went out there and showed out but he should now looking back he should have been um, uh, uh, escorted from the school property but Again, it's the area that I don't see that happening. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, <laughs> um, there was a news report from a Fox affiliate the other day and um, a, a Denver news station and Fox affiliate. Um, let's see. Let me just read it to you. A Fox 31 producer probably got a pink slip moments after letting a giant pink uncut penis slip on the air while haphazardly shuffling through shuffling through random pics on Twitter. Now, whoever thought of that idea, like they was they were following a helicopter crash in the area, and they had like a little like four of the reporters sitting out. They kind of like like the, the Today Show. Um, I'm sure whatever local station it was, local Fox affiliate, and so. So the it looks like the guy who's um, who's who's actually doing the reporting and talking about it. He's he has like a tablet out and he's swiping through like he's doing pictures. But they're saying he wasn't the one that was um, controlling the pictures coming across the screen that the viewers see. And so the first picture is of the little helicopter the helicopter crash and they're smoking and they're, and they're commenting look you can still see smoke it just happened blah 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 and then the, he, he, the next picture comes up he's like oh there's then it's Edward Scissorhands that was your clue to stop looking now if you if you guys are on Twitter and a lot of people are a lot of these sites are full with images of naked booties naked boobies penises sex all kind of stuff on twitter there's no filter just like on well vine they they filter the hashtags but there's no real filter and so when you see the ad with scissor hand on there you know there was no more of <laughs> you you knew there wasn't any more uh pictures pertaining to the helicopter crash but yet still you go to the next one and it's a big huge omelet that didn't look really good to me but it's a big old picture of an omelet on there and um, and then you didn't stop again. Then you go to the next picture and there's this penis <laughs> uncut hanging out there in all this glory. And then it automatically goes off and you see all the four of them are like aghast of what just happened. But they, they, they kept it. Did, they did keep it cool because I would have started laughing if I was on there. They would have fired my black ass, too, because. I would have started laughing because that's funny. Uh, but yeah, so you have to be careful. Be, when you're going through people's um, 
uh, pictures, you know, if they show you one picture, look at the one picture. It like there's a there's a little joke or something that's on Facebook, um, and they know how like people be like, um, here here's this picture, but don't swipe wipe, don't swipe left or don't swipe right, <laughs> because you never know what you see. So I don't never give it anybody. Not that I have any of those kind of pictures on any of my devices, because I don't do those type of things wink and um but no i'm gonna hold my phone and then you kids because people they they know this uh but i was at the dinner with a young lady um about a month ago for her birthday and, and i felt her she, 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 she was showing me a picture on her phone and i went to grab it you know because i know i'm not gonna go through all your pictures and uh she's like, oh no you can't hold it i'm gonna do it for you <laughs> i'm like girl i understand you can't hold mine either so it's just one of those things you just you just don't do it it's, it's it's the age we live in with people are very very um they, they like to be a very um what's the word exhibitionist <laughs> um because you might get a true and live education on oh hey uh todd what's up <laughs> are you laughing at me <laughs> prankville is in the room everybody thank you for joining me todd i appreciate you um uh, but yeah, you just can't you can't take anybody's phone because you will get one old education, and um, I don't care because if you think here's the thing with that, and I know it's during daytime and maybe the kiddies weren't in school and uh, you might have, they might have to explain well what was that what what elephant was on what kind of elephant was that mommy, you know, uh, <laughs> but it was just a penis, you know what it was the. Americans are so uptight about sexuality and nudity. In in, in Europe, it, people wouldn't have thought nothing about it. That's not even worth news to re, to, re, to be reporting. We're just so tightly wound, and if you've seen one penis, you've seen them all. Nothing, uh, Mister Morris. I'm just. I felt like talking, so I thought I'd hop on for a little bit and um, see what was going on. Um, I was um, just chatting about some different things that I read. Um, <laughs> today and yesterday online and given my um, two cents on the topics one last break when we come back and we're going to wrap up
surfboard, <laughs> watermelon. I, you know, I had to play my girl before I got out of here tonight. That was Beyonce with Drunken Love and before that, which one of the better songs on the album, Jealous. Um, and I think the song is not really what people think it's about. They think she's, um, well, she's telling them she's jealous, but it's about relationships and how sometimes the person who's doing all the complaining is the one that's the wrong that's the wrong person in the relationship. So I totally like that. And the album is really, really good. If you haven't checked out Beyonce's latest album, it is kind of on point. Uh, no, it's not kind of. It is on point because she's the queen. Bow down. Right. <laughs> that's <how> I, so <laughs> It's funny when I go to work because I hate everybody that I work with. I, I play that song was Bow Down Bitches <laughs> and I turn it up really loud when I pull up to work so they can hear before I come in. <laughs> Is that crazy? Is that rude or what? <laughs> like bow down bitches, bow, bow down bitches. <laughs> Cause I think I'm the king, right? <laughs> Anyhow, thank you guys. <laughs> Todd and uh Stabby McHugs. Thank you guys for rolling through my chat room and checking me out as I kinda talk about just about anything but i'm not talking long tonight um i don't really try to stay on an hour sometimes i go over an hour but tomorrow tomorrow at 1 p.m central standard time um i think it's 11 11 a.m pacific time i it, it's kind of an interview uh it, it, it was not it is an interview but it's like one of my um one of my geeky things um you Todd, if you call Beyonce a heifer one more time, uh, we're gonna have to take it outside. You had to get up off my girl. Trust and believe. <laughs> um, he called Beyonce heifer. You know I don't play that. <laughs> no, so tomorrow at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific Time. Um, I wouldn't say an interview of a lifetime, but it's it's pretty big for me because I never thought that I would be able to talk to a person from this organization. Um, Free Comic Book Day um, creator and founder Joe Field will be talking to me. Now, the, the live broadcast will be on Blog Talk Radio, um, but then I'll replay it here tomorrow night on Spreaker. Uh, I'm going to be like tomorrow early evening, maybe 6-ish six to, six tomorrow, 6-7. Um, you know, I had to do some edits and things for Spreaker but um, talking to Joe Field from Free Comic Book Day. Now, if you guys don't know what Free Comic Book Day is, you can go to freecomicbookday.com and um, you can see what they're offering. It is the one time of the year where they give the comic book stores give out free comic books. Now, depending on where you live and how big your store is and how big the population is, like I have two comic book stores here in the city, well, really three, but two that participate. And between the two, I can get almost all the books um, because it's not a, it's not a big population here. Um, well, it is and it isn't. Uh, Todd, you keep it up with that Beyonce stuff now. See, he admit, Todd had made me prank real. Todd Morris made me l lose my train of thought calling Beyonce half, and he gonna say, LOL, yeah, I said it. Yeah. I watch Charmed. I know how to do spells and stuff and things. Be careful. <laughs> um, and you know what happened to uh, Keisha Cole and uh, Sierra and what's the other chick's name? Carrie, see, I forgot that Carrie Hilson, when they talked about Queen B, they ain't had a record since. <laughs> but uh, Free Comic Book Day, May 3rd this year. It's always the first Saturday in May um, where they give free books, free comic books away to bring, you know, new people into the genre. Um, and comic books aren't necessarily for kids anymore. They do have, if you have children, they have children, they do have kids, but they have Adventure Time, which I don't know if that's really for kids. Um, they do have, uh, what's that, Teen Titans Go uh, from the Cartoon Network. So take your kid, get you a couple books, get them a couple books. Um, a lot of people have <laughs> learned to read or, you know, understand bigger words that are used from comic books. And if you're a geek nerd like me, um, 
it's something fun to do. I always take my nephew. You can dress up. There'll be a lot of cosplayers um, out there. And also, it's an opportunity if you live in a city that has um, local artists and writers that have their, that they're, that are publishing their own comic books. It gives you an opportunity to see what they're doing, see what they're about, and gives you an opportunity to, to to patronize and support your local artists. Because um, the one, the big comic book store here, they have giveaways, they have contests. Um, um, local artists, gallery, all kind of stuff um, for this one day. And it's something fun. Uh, so like I said, if you have a, a young person in your life um, and, and you want to be a mentor to them or just spend some time with them, take them to Free Comic Book Day. If you go to freecomicbookday.com, Com, there is a, a, a comic book store low cut cater, and it will tell you which one... Uh, which comic book store in your area is participating. So look for that interview tomorrow at 1 p.m. We're going to talk to Joe Field and find out how all this um, came about because obviously I missed the memo because it's been around for a while. Uh, we're going to find out about what books they're talking about this year and um, we're going to chat, chat with him about some geeky stuff tomorrow. So that should be fun. Um, let's see. Kishiko is my girl. I Actually, I do like Kishiko uh, prank um, I, actually, I love Keisha Cole, but until she started talking about Beyonce, you know, good thing she married a ball player, you know, and plus Keisha Cole is from um, Atlanta, from Atlanta, Georgia, Well, she, she lives in Atlanta, Georgia. I never seen her while I was there, though, but um, that's where she resides, but yeah, but once she t talked about Queen B, it was over. And so, word to the wise, Mr. Morris, I uh, expect you to not speak um, about Beyonce in such disparaging language, uh, or there will be reprisals, <laughs> because um, there just will be. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Stabby, uh, for joining me tonight. It is the 5x5 five five Late Night Show. I'm David, and I am out of here. You guys have a nice after well, afternoon. Have a nice tomorrow. Bye.